How we doing, everybody? Welcome back to Big Dogs Gotta Eat. It's your man's Nicholas. Uh, it's Monday, so we are diving behind the scenes of the fantasy football industry. Every Monday, I'm going to be interv- interviewing, apologies, interviewing uh, some sort of innovator or influencer in the fantasy football space that I think has uh, a lot of entrepreneurial traits to them. Someone who is, you know, making a difference in the industry from a business, marketing, uh, social engagement perspective and, and, you know, helping this industry kind of hit its stride and innovate forward because this is a rapidly growing industry and there are a lot of people doing a lot of cool things. So I want to expose y'all to that. Um, so y'all know how this, how this works. If you've missed any of the previous episodes, go check them out. They will be linked down below, or you can hit the, uh, you can head over to my channel and, and just check the playlist. I don't know. It's somewhere in there. Y'all, y'all are smart people in my audience. You can, you can figure it out today. I'm joined by someone that you may know as, uh, the fantasy football counselor. He goes by, Joseph Robert. Switch that, flip that. His name is Joseph Robert, but he goes by Fantasy Football Counselor. At this point, I feel like people who have a big following almost uh, go by their following name. But that's neither here nor here. Me and Joe sat down. This was actually an interview that we did in the summer. But as soon as the season kicked off, you know, this series took a back seat. Uh, So I've kind of had this video sit on my hard drive for a minute. I figured I'd put it up today for y'all because I know a lot of people wanted to see this interview. Joe joined me, sat down, and we talked for 45 minutes or an hour. Uh, He kind of talked about, you know, what his thinking was between um, jumping on to Instagram, why he thought that was a good platform to jump on, why he has some problems with people in the industry. You know, a lot of the things that you see him kind of come out with uh, in in public and on his social platforms, we uh, we dive into. It was a really good uh, conversation, actually. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to bring it to you. So make sure you follow Joe after the interview. If you enjoyed, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We will be doing one of these interviews every single Monday going forward. Uh, if you found it valuable, make sure you share it with people. Hopefully uh, it, it inspires you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, any of that stuff, you know to hit that comment button down below. I love y'all and uh, tuck your shirts in, stop yelling, enjoy the interview. Peace. Good. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit off the edge. So I'm going to talk like respectfully, but I'll, I'll kind of explain the chip on my shoulder type thing. You know what I mean? I guess we can kind of get into that. I want to kind of pick your brain before we start. Like, are you like, you're trying to be an entrepreneur with this? Are you essentially trying to be like the vocal voice of everybody in the industry, including yourself? Or do you want to be more of an analyst? I'm just kind of seeing your point of view. I don't really consider myself an analyst. I, I think what I do well is I'm able to kind of see all these different points of views. Like I, I'll, I'll take in information from a ton of different analysts and I think I do a good job of conveying the noise versus what's actually real and like what people need to see. So it's almost like I consider myself a middleman in the industry. I don't know if that would make me an analyst. I mean, I do my own work and I do a ton of my own research, but I right. like getting different points of view. So the way I look at it is like when I started, it was it was something that I was passionate about. Obviously, you don't start a blog or a YouTube channel if you're not passionate about it. Um, right. But, but as I saw the industry growing a lot, I was like, there's a big opportunity to turn this into more of a, like a business venture. And since I've always been interested in that, I was like, dude, this is this is it. And I started doing that this summer, like pretty intensely. But there are people obviously doing a lot of innovative things in the industry. That's the parts I'm interested about. It's not like I'm trying to like steal ideas or anything, but it's like a genuine interest on my part. And I think it'll help out a lot of people once they hear it, you know? Nice. nice. I did say something where I'm like, I'm going to be the face of fantasy in three years. And I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to announce that here or not. And then you said not if you beat me to it. So are you looking to kind of be the next Matthew Barry, essentially? No, too? no, no way. I don't even, I honestly, at the end of the day, I like, that's not my goal to be like the top fantasy football analyst. I would never consider myself that and I think that's why like I want to separate myself as a person from being a fantasy football analyst it's okay, a reason good, good. yeah I put a lot of videos out there like vlogs right like capturing the behind the scenes shit of my main financial income is from marketing like I'm a marketer at heart and that's what I do for like e-commerce businesses and stuff I run their, their right, paid right. traffic so it's really just like a blend of all my interests and hobbies so I don't that's why my channel name isn't like obviously I could probably get a ton more views using fucking something that has fantasy football in the you know in the title of my channel but that's not right. what I'm looking to do. I, I want to be my own person and build a brand around the person I am rather than being a fantasy analyst. What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel as we chug along. We are moving on to episode number six. We've had some awesome, awesome, awesome guests so far. We have another awesome one on the channel today, and I'm sure he will not disappoint if you are following people on social media, which I'm sure you are since you are watching us on YouTube right now. You have seen Mr. Joseph Robert, a.k.a. 
the fantasy football counselor. He has the single biggest fantasy football account on Instagram. He is someone who is obviously well-versed in the marketing game, considering he's putting himself on YouTube. He's putting himself on Instagram, on Twitter. He's got a big podcast. I am super excited to have you on the show today to talk about you know the industry side, the marketing side, the business side of fantasy football, because I think you do a great job. And I, I want to hear as many perspectives of you know like what your successful journey has been like up to this point and uh you know where you think the industry is going and all those things so i want to say thank you for your time thank you for joining the big dog country on the channel today and welcome to what we call the headquarters show why don't you give us a little uh background on you know your come up in the fantasy football industry uh what you're doing prior to fantasy football and you know what you're working on now stage is yours well, thanks for having me on. I think you're doing a good thing, kind of putting all the analysts in here together, doing some interviews, talking a little bit more, getting to know everybody in the industry. I think it's a really good thing that you're doing. So first of all, I commend you on that. You're doing a good job with your channel. And uh, firstly, yeah, I want to commend you on that. So a little bit about me, like you said, you know, I started out in the hydraulics industry, believe it or not. When I was really young, I worked in a grocery store, but I kind of won't go too much into the story on it uh, in regards to too much background. But I will tell you that, you know, I came out from humble beginnings, worked my way up. And originally I started with uh, the fantasy frame, which is essentially like a league prize. And it was just basically cards that were like a league prize. And it was a frame. And then you put your team in there and it was like the ultimate bragging right had martavis brian endorse the brand and i realized that like i don't want to just sell stuff I'm, I'm more of a personality so i realized that there was an emerging platform called instagram and i started vlogging on there and i started i didn't know where i was going actually if you see one of my first couple of videos i'm actually I had the shaved head and it just it just looks really weird i'm really awkward when i'm talking and you know i really had to break out of my shell and i was a sales guy go my, my whole life i did hydraulic sales believe it or not like i said but uh, again, humble beginnings, grew up, and I started off with the fantasy frames, and the Instagram started booming. People started DMing me. I'm like, I really like this. I really like providing value uh, on a direct consulting level, and it just started blowing up from there. And I'm like, okay, I've started a podcast. Now we're well over uh, a million downloads on the podcast, and only two seasons that we're going to the third year. Uh, we cracked the million mark. So, I mean, just things just keep going, man. That's, you know, kind of in a nutshell, the elevator pitch there on what, I, what I'm doing. Okay, so you saw the opportunity on Instagram. And I just want to interject, by the way, when you saw me kind of bouncing up and down, that wasn't telling, yeah. that, that wasn't me telling you to be quiet or, or lower the volume. That was me getting into the hydraulics part of it. Isn't that like, oh, hydra- okay. Yeah. I thought it was like the mic was too loud no, no, or something no. like that. No, no, no okay, you're good. Feel free to, to get up and, and yell as much as you want. I'll just be doing like gotcha. dance moves in the background the entire gotcha, time. Gotcha, gotcha. I, I thought the mic was too loud. So. <laughs> No, no. Back to, all right, so we get it now. Okay, cool. Yeah, so okay, so you saw uh, Instagram as this emerging platform, and this is one of the big, big reasons I wanted you on because that's like a perfect pinpoint on seeing things that are emerging in in fantasy football and just emerging right. in terms of in these social platforms. Because I believe that the way to break out is you can create something that's extremely unique, like what we've seen from Matt Harmon and his reception perception, a ton of these different guys who are very skilled at one particular thing. Or the other way to do this is to capture an emerging market and be one of the first to market. Um, And you did that with Instagram. So that was pretty much your first soiree into the fantasy football game, correct? Like Instagram was, was your big thing. Um, and then yeah. you, you started spreading out to these other platforms. Now, I think your YouTube channel goes back a few years. So talk to me about diversifying your content and like why you got into YouTube and why you're doing it so heavily now. And, um, you know, the, just these different platforms, like obviously you can you can blow up on Instagram and kind of be complacent with that. But you're trying to get your face everywhere. So talk about how important you think that is. I guess I was being ignorant to YouTube. I had the podcast there and the audio was great. And I just like it's one of those things that's kind of a hurdle. And in life, sometimes you have these hurdles. You just got to break through. And one of those things was how do I get because I don't have a background with editing or video or cameras. I got some lights on me, got the little studio set up here. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a guy that was into that. So I had to teach myself everything. And one kind of hurdle I didn't want to jump over was how do I get the podcast on video and that was a big learning curve man I sat down I had to sit down figure it out so once I ever overcame that I'm like you know video is a necessity for my podcast particularly it works for me it may not work for everybody else but I love the YouTube aspect of it and I want to have you know put my face out there more and I was doing a good job of it on Instagram but I figured why don't I offer more content long form other than just one minute video clips I wanted to offer more now and I understand IGTV is out there but still not as big as YouTube so I had to get out there on YouTube and really you know crack the industry in regards to putting the podcast out there there are some other pioneers on YouTube but there isn't a lot on YouTube for the podcasts and the guys that are on there are doing a good job so I'm in here to kind of 
take over YouTube too, just like I did Instagram. I mean, diversifying your content is so key because everyone wants to see you. If they follow you and they value your opinion. They want to consume as much of you as possible. And, and I commend right. you for kind of seeing the trends there and, and getting in with YouTube because it is definitely not an easy thing to do at the start, right? It's kind of like awkward no. and nervous and you could be kind of clumsy and you look like you're not natural. But for the people that want to start, I want to let you know that every single person has ever started like on video or YouTube with probably a select, select few people are not going to be natural when they start. So, you know, you obviously have the big Instagram following of around like 80,000. Has YouTube become your favorite platform? If you could choose one platform to kind of own and be the biggest on, which one would it be for fantasy football? This is a tough one. I mean, I think Instagram is kind of my baby. I mean, you got to check my DM, man. It's just so backed up. And I kind of like, I like that because it's that personal touch with the followers. I know you get that in the comments on YouTube, but I just love the fact that they can connect with me. And I love the story mode. And I mean, it, I, I'd have to lean toward, if I had to choose one, if I had to eliminate everything, I'd have to probably want to keep Instagram just because that's kind of where I started. But I mean, YouTube is kind of like a close second right now. Probably a little bit biased because you got on the IG, but I, I don't think my opinion would be that far off. I love YouTube. And, and if I had to personally choose, I would do YouTube. And maybe I'm biased in that sense. But I think the video aspect of YouTube is is enormous because, you know, you can read a million blog posts, but you take away the right. numbers from those, right? Like when you're done with the blog post, you're like, okay, this is my opinion on whoever, like this is my opinion on Marlon Mack, but you don't, like the author goes out of your head. Uh, when you watch someone on YouTube, you remember their face. And it's almost like if you ran into them in public, you would know exactly how they would act. Like if someone, if uh, if I ran into one of my subscribers, right, they would know what my facial expressions would be like. They would probably know like the next words that are coming out of my mouth. So when I look at YouTube, I think that's an amazing place for people to start. But at the same time, you always have to diversify because like you said, that that one-on-one -on -one engagement is huge. And I kind of want to talk about that because your following is, is uh, tremendously bigger than mine on Instagram. And I get dozens and dozens of DMs a day and comments on YouTube and emails and Twitter DMs and all this shit. Talk to me a little bit about dealing with the overwhelming number of DMs you get, because I personally try to make that like as much of a part of my business plan as actually putting out the content, because people love that one-on-one -on -one feeling of you actually personally answering them, and they'll come to you if they know you're going to answer something over some of these other top analysts, and I think that's really important for building a brand. So talk about how you stay on top of that. Well, I'm the first person to ever created, but I'm offering video training now, and I have a mastermind group where people that really want access to me can get it. So I, when I first started the first year, I was literally trying to get to every DM, and I could at that point because the volume wasn't there. Now with the volume, man, I'm like – it's 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 overwhelming. So I try to really get to as many as I can. The people that urgently want to get a hold of me kind of tag me, check DM, and they kind of create that urgency. So I kind of leak bleep over there and say, hey, jump on over to my elite talent mastermind group. So you know that's what I'm, I'm kind of consolidating all the people. And I kind of want to filter out people that aren't serious. Some people kind of DM me, and you know, no offense to them, I love everybody that DMs me and I appreciate. It, but sometimes it's a complete waste of time or it's a spammy thing. Like today we had this issue with the, the whole penny thing and the Carson the penny injury and stuff like that. And you know you get the haters and the DM box and stuff like that. And I open it, I'm like, ah, I, you know, I couldn't have wasted my time on this enough. Yeah. But again, the people that are serious and passionate, I try to get to as many people as possible. And I genuinely, and again, I come off a little bit chip on my shoulder a little bit when I'm talking to the industry. We're gonna get into that. I guess you had a question about that. But when I'm talking to the person, I'm extremely humble to my fans and my listeners because I'm all about them. To me, I put them ahead of everybody, and that's kind of my mentality. It's all about the listeners. And my, I'm extremely passionate. My mission on this planet, and again, it's you know to be a good father and all that, which I, which I am recently. It's mainly it's it's helping people and providing that value. So to me, I'm obsessed with people winning, winning, winning their leagues, and that's what I'm going to get into. I guess when, you, when I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but you know, I got a lot of passion in me. Yeah, and I think that's like the main driver for anyone basically coming into the industry. If if your goal when you're starting is immediately money and revenue, you're not going to last, man. This, this stuff is no. it has to be straight out of passion. And that's not just fantasy football. That's anything that you're trying to build, of course. Um, also, congrats on becoming a father. That's, that is awesome. Thank you. And I want to actually touch on, you said you have a mastermind group. So I had uh, CD Carter, Denny Carter on for an interview last night. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but he's the owner of Draft Day Consultants. So he has a lot of the no. top analysts working for his business. And basically they offer a consulting service. So people who want preseason calls for like 30 minutes, and he has some of the top heads in the industry on it. 
or even like live draft kind of stuff. You can be on a phone call or a video call with them during your draft and they help you out with that. One of the points I made basically when I was talking to him about it is how he did a great job of taking something from another industry right? Consulting, because that's so successful in other businesses. And he brought it to fantasy football, which you're like, this is kind of crazy at first. You're talking about a mastermind group. And for people that are unaware of what a mastermind group is, it's basically you have private access to a select group of people. So it's like you pay X amount of dollars, whether it's monthly or whatever your, your pricing scale is, to be in a very select group, whether it's uh, a Facebook group or whether it's a private email chain or something like that, to have access to someone like Joe. So why don't you talk to us about your thought process behind creating the mastermind and what's uh, what's the logistics behind it? Like, do you have it as a Facebook group or like, how are you doing that? First of all, shout out to all the elites. Love you guys. It's an amazing group in there. They're extremely passionate and they're diehards. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of filter out the noise and get people that are serious. So I priced it up pretty reasonable. It's around 85 bucks for an entire year, which consists of live Q and A's with me, uh, optimized DFS players for the week, waiver wire pickups. And I want to consolidate it. And I wanted to put it at a price point where it's reasonable. It's not over the top but it's not you know not too expensive but not too cheap either but I also wanted to kind of monetize what I was doing but also offer more value to people in that group instead of these DMs and scrambling all around I think the mastermind is a good thing but it's not, you can't just and I see people try this with like 10 followers and it's like I want to create a mastermind you can't do that and, and you know it's really like honestly what I've done in the past three years is literally blood sweat and tears I mean it's like some so many people DM me like, what do I do? How do I get into this? Can you give me a shout out? No, I'm not just going to give you a shout out with two followers. You got to kind of put it out there. Nobody gave me a shout out and nobody's giving me a handout. Everything I've done, I've earned out of the sweat of my brow. I don't even know how else to explain it. And it's hard. It's not easy. You got to be passionate. There's so if you don't love what you're doing, it just is generally speaking. You know this too. Like there's so many times I want to launch this computer out the window because I got to learn how to edit. I got to learn how to do. How do I upload on YouTube? How do I rank high on YouTube? How do you know the algorithm on Instagram? How do you do this? How do you do that? How do you vlog? How do you set this light? Like the lighting is set up a certain way right now. Like that was a tweak. This mic is an SM7B. It's a $500 mic. Like I had to pick this mic, but I had to go through like four shitty mics till I found this one out and then I got to figure out the sound. So what I'm saying is you got to love what you do and I'm going off on a tangent here. Uh, but yeah, the mastermind, I love it. <laughs> keep on rolling, my friend. Just keep rolling. Yeah, yeah. these are, these are big, to give some value here. Big, what you do. Yeah, this is, these are big facts you're laying out and I think saying you got to teach yourself all these things and we've touched on this with every analyst that's come on here and being resourceful is just so big and there's so many resources out there that can teach you how to do these things and like if that's something that's stopping you because you don't know how to do anything that's going to stop you no matter what you're doing because you could teach yourself whatever it is and you talked about like having 10 followers and trying to do a mastermind group you got to build the audience you, you could turn the audience into revenue i've said this every episode but you can't buy followers i mean you can buy fake followers and bots but that's a whole nother conversation but you can't buy loyal followers with money you have to build the audience and then turn it into revenue and i think um, the $85 price point is is actually it's actually very reasonable if not on the lower side because if you're in a mastermind in terms of like a business group or a business mastermind those things can be thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars per year because they provide you with people that have, have gone through these industries and these networks and, and they give you connections that you wouldn't find elsewhere. I think that's a really cool thing that you're doing. That's probably something I've thought about but haven't really had time to sit down and figure out the logistics behind it. And while we're on the business side of things, I know we, we kind of had a conversation prior to the video starting. You and I kind of connected on the fact that we think of these, we think of what we're doing as, as kind of a business venture. And a lot of it comes from like self-help books and not in like a corny way, but like motivational books and people who are great business leaders and entrepreneurs that help you in all aspects of life. So I know you had your, your little library behind you. So right. you want to whip out a couple of the books and, and let us know what you're reading and let us know, you know, why you love these books. <clears throat> it's funny because like society and I've kind of came up with the word can sheep is because I was in the grind. I did the nine to five. I hated it. I want to, I, I just want, I lost my mind. And I guess it's scientifically proven that if you're stuck in traffic, it does stress you out. And I was stuck in the grind and I want to break out. I had asshole bosses that, that treated me like garbage. And I just, I'm like, I have to break the mold. How do I break the mold? And I'm going to get to 
the books in a second, but I just kind of want to elaborate on this and kind of build on it. Uh, so I was in the grind for years, and then sometimes when you get older, I think it's past the age of 25, and I follow some mentors that I've studied some of the psychology behind this. But after 25, if you haven't really gotten your ways, you're kind of hardwired mentally to stay in your ways, right? But there's this trauma. Trauma can change you, right? So trauma that changed me was a loss of my dad in 2015 suddenly to a heart attack. So to me, and we came from humble beginnings, so we didn't have a lot of money. We were provided for, but we never had the luxuries of life. And I was just stuck in this grind. And after losing him, I had started Fantasy Frames at the time. He was helping me build it. We were organizing the cards that go into these frames. And we, were, we watched sports growing up. So I'm like, how do I break out of this mold, right? How do I do it? So I started like reading and, and studying entrepreneurs. So one of the guys that I kind of really go by and I kind of study his stuff, I'm kind of past his stuff now, but if you're just getting in and breaking out of that comfort zone, I recommend Tony Robbins. He's kind of the guy that kind of broke me in and changed my life a little bit. Then after that, I started looking for online mentors, stuff like that. And then I started reading biographies and autobiographies and stuff. This is a Jordan book. And it's amazing once you start going into their life because here you talk about Jordan and his ancestors and what they've been through and the hardships they had to endure. It's just crazy how much you learn from reading. So if you want to break out, I mean really just say to yourself like I don't want to do this anymore and start building your side hustle on the side. And then eventually it's going to grow. But you got to be passionate about it because, again, there's so many sleepless nights where I just sat here editing and figuring stuff out. And it's like, again, if I didn't love fantasy football, I wouldn't have made it this far already. Like I still have a ways to go, but it's it's a lot of hurdles you got to overcome. And, uh, again, if you're stuck in that nine to five, find your passion and get the hell out of there. I mean that's my advice. Yeah, obviously Tony Robbins is awesome. And, and reading those kind of books really open your eyes to – the different paths people have have taken to get to where they are, and I know we talked about Gary Vaynerchuk. He is one of my absolute favorite people, and I think if you're right. if you're younger, if you're from the ages like eighteen to twenty five, and for for reference, I'm twenty five years old, so I can relate to where you're at. I I know my prime years are ahead of me, but for people that don't really know what they're doing in life, twenty five is a scary age because you feel like you should kind of have your shit together, have your direction. And I get a lot of questions from people that see my vlogs and stuff and they know that I, I'm in marketing and they're like, hey, I'm just getting out of school. Uh, where should I go with the direction in terms of marketing? And I never, I try not to lead them to like specific tactical directions and be like, you should listen to this social media marketing podcast. I give them podcasts and, and videos or YouTube channels that I listen to that are more centered around like helping you as a person and being more motivated and having a better mindset. Like I give them, and I think that's really important for people to understand that this is a huge process. Like in order to get to where you wanna go, you have to change yourself first before you can be right. the best statistician or coder or whatever it is, man. You have to have a certain grind to you and you have to have this passion like you're saying, but if you don't have the right mindset, it's very hard to stay consistent with where you're going. And, and Joe, I appreciate you opening up about about your dad. And I uh, that that's something that I don't really open up to much on my channel. Like I do a lot of behind the scenes stuff, but my father passed away when I was like one or two years old, and that's something that has that has definitely uh, affected me in ways that I didn't think it had until up until. Sorry like, to hear. Sorry to hear that. By the way, very sorry to hear that. You know, yeah. yeah, it's just like people would always ask me. Growing up, they're like, how did it affect you, uh, you know, as you grew up? And at the time, I was like, I never really knew him because I was so young. So it's not like uh, it had an effect on me. But as you get older, you realize that there are a lot of things that you don't learn and you don't, you, you miss out on certain things because it's not there. But for the people out there, like everyone struggles with these different types of things that they miss out on. But you have to know that there are people out there that have gone through the same things as you. And there are people out there that are building a platform to, to help you with these things. So it, it's way deeper than, than fantasy football and it goes way deeper into into life on these things but i don't want to get too 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 crazy deep i want to kind of circle back to something in the business sense now you do the mastermind and i know you have the cuddy system right and right. i thought this was this was really interesting when i found this and it was something i was very intrigued by because i work with a business coach and he his like first initial thought was like in terms of monetizing he's like can you make a video series about fantasy football and sell and have that be sold year over year over year and i'm like ah oh, well the way fantasy football goes it's like you need new videos up every single day and every week so those get outdated quickly but from what i understand i haven't gone through the cutty system but is this evergreen content meaning that whatever it is will still work in a year from now or two years from now for the most part can you talk about the cutty system yeah so the cutty essentially is a foundation for when you're drafting it's essentially a thought process it's like one of those common sense things but you know like i said common sense not that common anymore and i was sitting there and i thought to myself okay well i have a certain criteria that goes through my head subconsciously 
Uh, how do I put it on paper? So I started laying, okay, well, what do I need to get a good player? I need a player that's consistent year in, year out. Okay, that's your C for Cuddy. And then I'm like, I need a player with upside because I really love upside players. That's why I've got Royce Freeman, Ronald Jones on my teams. I drafted Kareem Hunt last year. I'm insane with upside players. So I'm like, upside, that's another word. And then I'm like, durability. I'm like, okay, yeah, you need a player that's durable. Because I, I never draft players. Like, I will never touch a Jordan Reed. Although I think, side tangent, I think Jordan Reed might have a good year if he stays on the field this year. But anyway, I don't draft players that aren't durable. And then depth chart. To me, I'm, I heavily weight depth charts. I look at who's in there. Are they in a committee that's going to affect them? Like, everyone's high on Dalvin Cook this year. I'm not going to invest that early in Dalvin Cook. He's a top 10 running back according to the Sheepsis rankings. I'll go into that <laughs> later with you. I don't know why I hate the industry sometimes. But yeah, Dalvin Cook essentially, like, he's a top 10. But he's got Latavius. Davis Murray, how are you completely ignoring a guy that had eight touchdowns last year, 12 touchdowns the year before with Oakland, 800 plus rushing guards last year, 200 plus 16, I think it's 216 attempts. And, and, and again, you got to look at the depth chart. There's kind of close in, in regards to that. And then ups, and then ups, or what's the last one? I can't even remember my own cutty. Uh, youth, <laughs> youth is the last one. So consistency, upside, durability, depth, and youth. Implement the stop process. And this is good for advanced players or when you're doing DFS or when you're doing – if you're a new person. And if you just kind of think about this subconsciously or consciously when you're looking at players, you're going to end up drafting an optimal roster. And I did a whole video training on it, trademark the system. I mean this is, I, I believe, kind of like an industry changer. And again, the industry not giving me any love for it. But hey, guess what? Got to do it on my own, right? And if people are catching on and it's getting out there. Yeah, I mean that's the thing, man. Like when you're building these social platforms – you don't need the industry to like what you're doing as long as your audience appreciates it, you know, and you're giving them value and they're willing to pay the money for it. So thank you for, you know, kind of giving us an insight onto the Cuddy system. And I think that's a genius idea in terms of doing evergreen content that you can consume year over year. And, and that's something I try to do because I do a, a draft guide basically. And I don't just want to do a typical draft guide where I name the top sleepers and busts. It is what I do, but I have sections right. that are just like articles that, that will help you like forever or super interesting to you. And like my top 15 or top 20 resources that you can research your own players on that stuff you could use forever. And I think that's like something that an analyst point of view don't really do a good job. And I was, I was kind of explaining to you prior to this video going live that, you know, I, I don't consider myself like a fantasy football analyst as much as I do someone who conveys information. I think that's so important because people will come, even if you're not the one doing the typical primary research, if you can find the best research out there and then convey it to you, and then convey it to the audience, they're going to be like, I'm going to go to this guy, even though it's not his work, he's really good at finding the best work. And that's kind of how I consider myself doing that. And you're you're kind of doing that in, in, in another sense in the Cuddy system, right? It's not going to be like statistics and research, uh, while I'm sure there are a lot of that in there. It's like, it's a good system to go by. Let's circle back to the industry and, and some of the problems that you have <laughs> with the industry. Now, I see you kind of Going back and forth on Twitter with some uh, with some guys on there. This series is also about uncovering things that the top analysts see problems with because we always have to innovate, man. If there's something that's wrong with the industry, or there's something that that we see we can improve on, we got to do that because fantasy is a very non-confrontational industry. And anytime someone even gets on an argument on Twitter, it's like fucking Floyd Mayweather and McGregor are getting in the ring. That's like the most excitement you'll get. Nothing will ever go past that. But I do see you kind of button heads with some people. So why don't you why don't you give your side of the story? All right, maybe you can kind of highlight this in the YouTube video to get to this this part because this is the, the the meat and potatoes and the exciting part okay. here. So I mean, let's be honest here. Like, first of all, disclaimer here, and and again, I'm, I'm a guy that like I don't bullshit stuff, I don't sugarcoat stuff, but uh, kind of a disclaimer. I do respect people in the industry and what they're doing for the most part, and especially when I meet some of these guys who I conflict with on Twitter and stuff, and I shake their hand like, oh, Joe's actually a nice guy in person. So first and foremost. Part of it is a marketing thing, but, you know, WWE, right? But but I am real about a lot of this stuff. So when I say something, I mean, people might say, oh, that guy's a jerk. That guy's an asshole for saying that. But I'm speaking my mind because I'm for the people, right? I, you know, this may sound political, but uh, again, like I'm just – the, it needs a change. The industry fucking needs a change. There's a lot of bullshit out there. Let's be honest. I'm gonna be now. I'm kind of gonna open up here and I'm gonna vent out how how I feel about this bullshit. Every fucking single damn year, you have the top finishers, and then every goddamn single year, you have these white collar people with suits and ties giving you the same goddamn rankings. 
It's total bullshit. Okay, last year, Todd Gurley finished first, so I'm going to jump on his dick this year and tell you, hey, let's draft Todd Gurley first. Well, when Joseph Robert, the counselor last year, was telling you to draft Todd Gurley, and, and the industry is just so safe. They're so con sheepsis. They so conform. I want to be safe. Nobody wants to take a goddamn risk. Yeah, you get people that say, oh, this guy could break out, and there is some people out there, don't get me wrong, that do that, but I'm here to break the mold, and I'm not doing it just for hot takes because people kind of criticize it. Joe's doing a hot take. Well, let me tell you this year already how I'm already up ahead. The Kinships has had Darius Skies and Rashad Penny, and I and I wasn't I can't predict uh, injuries. I cannot do that, but I can tell you I didn't like their positions. I didn't like Carson there. I didn't like Thompson there. I didn't like the opportunity. But everybody, all of a sudden, Royce Freeman. I was about him and Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones endorsing the fantasy ball counselor brand this year. So those guys now are looking better, and slowly these guys slide, start sliding up. Last year, everybody cut me up for drafting Kareem Hunt. You're an idiot drafting Kareem Hunt prior to Spencer Ware injury in the third round in Experts League. Joe's an idiot. Sure enough, he breaks up. David Johnson, the year he broke out, I was at his house, and he endorsed my brand. The year before 2016, he broke out. Me and him sat together, and I knew he was going to be number one. I said, who's going to be number one, David? In his house, in his man cave. Draft me first of all. You guys heard that. David Johnson first overall. Next thing you know, we're at the Fantasy Football Convention in Dallas. There you go. The top guy's walking with David Johnson. Hey, look, I got David Johnson with me. Robert was there. Joseph Robert was there. We called it. This year, Kareem Hunt walking around with his gold chain with all these with all these so-called experts walking around with Kareem Hunt going, oh, I got Kareem Kareem Hunt, we know, hey, Kareem Hunt, I was already there last year. So this is why I get frustrated, and this is kind of my chip on my shoulder, because I've come from humble beginnings, with a humble background, I grind, I blood, sweat, and tears, and the industry needs a change, and I'm here to shake it up, and I go, man, I'm just going to shake it up, and that's the bottom line, and that, that's what it is, and I'm just so sick of the average, and it's just and, and it got away from the corporate, I'm, I'm elaborating here, but I got away from hydraulic sales, and not, not car hydraulics, industrial hydraulics, and I got, I did MMA fighting too, but I got away from things I didn't love because I want to do this and I love, and now I enter this corporate world again, the white collar suit and tie, well, well, Frank, I think, no names, I don't know, I'm just uh, random, <laughs> you know, well, Frank, I, I think Kareem Hunt should be good again, top five because of last year, well, Willie, well, I think, you know, it's just bullshit, white collar crap, and I'm here to change the game. That's my venting. So it's it's almost like you're not necessarily mad at these people's takes because they're allowed to do whatever they want, right? It's their opinion, right, right. their respect. It, it's just you find it frustrating that they have such huge platforms and influence audiences by the takes that they do make. And you would like to see people who are more diverse. And it kind of goes back to the point that you and I, who are building our platforms, will eventually be able to do that because – these guys who are at the top of the industry aren't versatile enough to realize that Instagram and YouTube and these other platforms are where it should be. So I would say in the long run, like you have your platform, you will get a big platform because you look at things from a marketing perspective and you'll be able to change the industry in that sense because it is a lot of, you know, like-minded people just thinking the same exact things over and over again. I don't want to get into player analysis, but I'm with the you. The magazines, on. the magazines, the, oh. the, the, the Conchipsis rankings, the ADPs, they're all bullshit because they're going to change. So why, I understand you, like, why would you put Royce Freeman in the top 10 now? doesn't really make sense, but if you tell people, stay away from this guy, like Kareem Hunt, I see a decline. I could be wrong, but I'm not going to draft Kareem Hunt at that ADP, ADP. Give me a guy like Fournette who's going to get more volume, who doesn't have Spencer or we're there. The bottom line is I'm real with my fans and that's the difference. I'm real, I'm genuine and some of these guys may be real, I don't know but to me, I find it's like, okay, here, I got this paper. Okay, here we go. Here's my paper. Alright, what do you want me to read? Alright, wait, girly fit? Yeah, yeah, okay, guys. Alright, one sec. All right, guys, and it's just like forget that shit, and I think the difference is I actually give a shit about people's teams because I've worked the nine to five, and I know how hard people work. Now, the average salary for a person playing fantasy is over 50 grand a year, so these guys are hard workers, and I actually took a poll in regards to, to my fans and my listeners, and these guys are electricians. These guys are lawyers. These guys are police officers. These are firefighters. These guys are hardworking people in the industry, and they're just fed garbage every single goddamn year. And I have a mission to actually help people win their leagues. That's what I'm all about. And I'm going to tell, tell people to watch this video because pe more people need to be aware of this. And I think fantasy football, it, it's still super early. Like, obviously, there are a lot of analysts out there, but there's still so much room to get in and, and create your own path and your own niche. Uh, and I want to circle back on, you were talking about, 
you know, hanging out with these players, David Johnson, Kareem Hunts, or whoever, you know, whoever it might be that you physically were with. First of all, like, how did you, how did you even run into those connections? How did you get the invite to David Johnson's house? Like, what, you know, t- talk about that. <laughs> again, it's, it's kind of building. It's like, you can't just call David Johnson and do that. It's again, it's just immersing yourself in the environment, in the industry. And again, I started with Martavis Bryant. You build up that rapport, you make contacts and it just keeps, uh, basically it's like a domino effect or whatever you want to say. It's just like a snowball effect. I should say it just keeps compounding. And it's not like, you know, I'm living, I'm kind of living the dream already. And it's kind of like, it's almost surreal because I literally was pushing grocery carts, you know, 15, 20 years ago. And, you know, I had this dream to do something in the sports. And now here I am making this dream come to life. And it's constant and never ending improvement. Tony Robbins talks about it. And it's constant effort. It's persistence. It's it's a combination of everything. It's passion. It's it's knowledge, and it's it's total. It's it's a ton of stuff to get to where you are. And I'm still not where I want to be. I still have a huge mountain to climb. There's a ton of ex- experts. And again, I give them credit to where they got. So I'm not just knocking these guys. Everyone says you're knocking these guys. No, I know with with absolute certainty, with every cell fiber in my being. And we're talking fantasy football, so we're getting deep here, man. Uh, that I provide a better service than anybody else in the industry. No offense to you, you're doing some cool stuff too, but I just take it to another level. And it's going to be a hell of a hard time for anybody to keep up with me. I think everyone who's doing their own thing probably has a sense of, of, of that feeling. But I'm not, I'm not here to debate you on that. I'm here, right, to, right. I'm here to host a good show and get the most out of this as I possibly can. So, you know, you have these players on. And I would love to have an ex-NFL an ex, uh, player or a, a current NFL player on for this series. Because I would love to hear their side of things uh, about fantasy football. Because I would imagine a lot of these players fucking hate fantasy football. And they hate that they're <laughs> constantly harassed by it i'd imagine i'd get someone on here and our conversation would almost have nothing to do with fantasy football like i would love to know more about what the lifestyle is like you have them on kind of endorsing your stuff and your brand and do you think that from an audience point of view because i almost see it as like if if you're in a room with like you know david johnson or martavis bryant and you're like who's the best in the fantasy football industry and they just say you it's like i mean obviously they're going to say that do you really think that having those guys on um, and endorsing you is is really like a big brand builder for you? I think it's more the social proofing, just being networked with those guys. I don't know so much in regards to like the endorsement of this guy is really good. Uh, these guys, a the majority of them don't play fantasy football. They're actually down to earth, humble guys. They're really nice guys. David Johnson, one of the nicest guys, humble family guy. Martavis Bryan, a lot of people, oh, that guy was you know doing weed or whatever. He was spending, he's a bad dude. dude. He's a really, really nice guy. So sometimes the perception that you see now there's a couple guys i won't name who that aren't approachable that i try to approach at these conferences and meetings and and stuff like that but a lot of the majority i'd say like eight out of ten or nine out of ten guys are super nice super approachable they don't play fantasy and that's mainly because of their schedules and nobody's really went and taught them because they're focused on their careers but again i think it's more the social proof end of it that's kind of why I endorse them and again you can see that you know David Johnson was one Kareem Hunt last year and just kind of I kind of pick winners it's kind of crazy so it's kind of helping the brand that way too because I'm picking the winners every year you um you attend a lot of these these conferences like the fantasy, well, the fantasy football I've been to the FSTA not so many athletes there but it's more the fantasy football convention of course networking with the guys that I've asked to endorse the brand and stuff like that so I mean I haven't really sat down too much with these guys mainly just through the the promotion that we're doing but from what I do, and I've talked to them on the phone when they call on the podcast, but again, just super nice down to earth guys, hard workers at what they do, super focused. For the most part, like ninety nine percent of people are genuinely good people if you have honest conversations with them. Like I, I don't really have a doubt in my mind about that stuff. I would just be worried that like if I had Saquon Barkley on my channel, like my conversation would somehow end up going to be like, yo, tell me about the parties at Penn State. So I don't know if I even need that responsibility on my channel to be honest with you. It's something that's kind of floated around in my head, going to these conferences and trying to network that way. And I never really wanted to do it because like my goal is not to be a top fantasy football analyst. And I feel like that networking and that connection is like, that's the goal when you go to these, these, uh, trade, you know, these trade shows and whatnot. And like doing this series, obviously is amazing networking and amazing connection because having a video call for an hour with like all of you guys, I'd imagine it'd be hard to forget like who I am and that's not in a narcissistic way, but it's just, right. you know, it's in your mind. So that's great networking, but that was never the point of the series. When are these fantasy football conventions? 
Uh, typically, they're held in Dallas, and they're in July. So that's where a guy named Andy Albers, who happens to be Tony Romo's cousin, it puts together an amazing show. You got all these athletes walking around. You got booths of people selling stuff, promoting their stuff, fantasy football data sites. Everybody's there. It's a great community. And that's where I met some of these other podcasts who were trash-talking me on Twitter. <laughs> it's funny because I was standing in line uh, trying to get a drink, and then I knew that this one – I won't say who, but this other podcast that was trash-talking me right behind me, and I could feel the tension behind me. So then I just turned around. I'm like, what's up, guys? How's it going? It's Joe. Call. You know, I'm like, I guess there was a misunderstanding on so And then you can see them all kind of like lighten up. And they're yeah. like, oh, it's Joe. Yeah, 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 you're not so bad in real life. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it was just cool, man. It's just good for networking and stuff like that, too. Yeah, I, I'd imagine that like that's how almost any of the face-to-face, in-person things would go. Because like I said, on Twitter, you won't hear more than like a tiny little argument. And everything needs to be like settled. And everyone kind of sets in and is like, oh, I don't want any confrontation and things. So I'd imagine... Face to face, it's even more so because it's not like fantasy football guys are not football guys. They're not the big guys that want that want confrontation and want problems in real life. So that's an interesting little tidbit there. And maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll attend next year and, and try to meet some people. I did make a lot of noise enough so that I actually got Brad Evans from Yahoo in a league because I called out the industry. Nobody wants to step up. I beat the top writers last year, so I was making all this noise. And then Brad Evans, I guess they can coerced them into getting into a league with me here yeah. uh so that's the kind of feel that i'm getting is like and then brad evans came on and said well i'm not really gonna try in this league and again brad evans super nice guy in person nothing bad to say but it was kind of fishy how he's saying it was kind of like covering himself saying if i lose then it's kind of like so the fact that he said he's not really he's gonna edit his line as he who kind of coerced me or to, to do this and this and that but anyway i'm in a league with brad evans once i beat his ass this year in a fantasy Ooh. football league i'm gonna move on and the thing is it's like everybody gets so freaking butthurt man it's like it's fantasy football dudes like let the trash talk begin. I kicked ass. I don't know where my belt is. My belt's not here. But I kicked ass, beat the industry. I'm not going to say who I beat. Yeah, it's one of those fantasy jocks belts. Say. Great company, by the way. They're not endorsing me. I know they're endorsing you or you endorse them or something like that. But again, they offer a great product. Shout out to those guys. And that's the belt I have. So I won the industry last year. So this year, Brad Evans, once I beat his ass, I'm, I'm calling out the other big dogs. And they keep dodging me. They keep dodging me, Nick. I don't know what to say, man. I hear you, keep man. Keep dodging me. Industry peoples, <laughs> if you watch it, stop dodging Joe. Get in the league. If you want him to stop talking, then get, then get in the league and kick his ass. And then he'll have Shut no, me up. Then he'll have no choice I don't but care. to stop talking. And heck, if I lose, I'll say, you know what? I lost, but I actually stepped up. And it's all about stepping up. It's trash talking. Grab your nuts. Let's go. Yes, Brad is a very good guy. He was actually – Nice on, guy. Yeah, he's on, he was on the series. He's the fourth episode of the series. I got to, uh, to interview him, which was fucking crazy because he's – a guy that was my idol when I was younger, and he's one of the guys that I kind of was inspired by because he's someone who you know uses his personality and his writing and his videos and things like that. And he broke through by building a brand around his personality, which I thought was uh, you know super inspiring to, to me because that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. That's funny. So the industry guys, you know where to find them. And yes, just to plug in fantasyjocks.com, they do sponsor these videos. Amazing products, as you guys already know if you're watching this. I, I plug them into all my videos. They. They do sponsor my stuff, but I work with them. Um, I do the marketing for them. So my, my, my actual job is social media marketing, right, through Facebook and Instagram, the paid campaigns, and I, I do that for their company. And that's actually how I got into the industry. A little background on myself is they were the first blog I ever wrote for, which was like five years ago. Um, and since then, they've obviously kind of blown up, and I've stuck with their blog section, and I do the marketing for them now. And now that I have a little bit of influence, they kind of showed the love back to me. Um, so it's a cool little partnership we got going on there. But yes, fantasyjocks.com. Definitely check them out, people, for belts, rings, trophies, live draft boards. It's all very high quality stuff. I can promise you that. I think we covered a lot of a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. And I think it's been a super helpful episode, man. And I, I really thank you for coming on. And I always like to leave my audience with some kind of actionable advice for the younger demo. Again, I always like to kind of point this towards them. If you are, you know, trying to break through in the industry, do you have any tips or advice, like anything at all, whether it's marketing, whether it's specific skills or whether it's, you know, whatever it is, the floor is yours, Joe. Um, again, I've heard the saying where focus goes, energy flows. I see so many people spread themselves thin. Focus on a niche, something that you're passionate about. Make sure you focus on that, master that, and just go like hell and do not stop. And as there's so many people just stop. And there's one saying, I listen to Spotify and there's a couple motivational sayings and, and kind of like playlists I listen to. One of them has a saying, I didn't come this far to only come this far. I came this far so I can go further and basically crush it, right? So if you just give up, 
I mean, that's just that's just weak. I mean, go for it. But I mean, if you hate it, then I suggest maybe going somewhere else. But only do it so many times, man. I mean, that's my advice. Go for something. Stay with it. And I always get DM like new fantasy account. What do I do? Well, put out content, put it out consistently, be creative with it and stick with it. And then I'll look like two months later and it's like, okay, that that account hasn't posted for three months. All right. Well, that's kind of your loss. You really got to be persistent. And I think nobody else is going to be as persistent as me in regards to anything I do. Even the sales, man, like that, that phone call didn't work, man. You don't want to buy my product next. You know, when I was in sales, like right? just calling people, right? Like you got to stay on top of people. And you got to be persistent. Yeah, man. I think that's why I'm so happy that I got into YouTube. And that's kind of my platform right now is because so much fucking work goes into making YouTube videos and editing them and uploading them that 95% of people are not going to stick with it, man. And that's why I like to see people start the YouTube channels because one, it's more competition for me. and, And it also just brings more eyeballs to the channel. But what you're saying is so true. Find that unique niche, whatever it, whatever it is. The weirdest fucking question you have about fantasy, start researching that shit as weird or as crazy as it might seem. Other people are going to have that question. So go towards that. Make it your niche. Be the guy there, whatever it might be. And, and you know, stay consistent, man. Like, you see me and Joe putting out content every fucking day, answering questions every day, whether it's Instagram, email blasts, YouTube videos. Like, all this stuff is so consistent. And a lot of you guys, like, I don't want to knock you guys, but you probably take it for granted just because you know us. And, and in your mind, like, yeah, they're going to put out value and content. But there's so much work that goes into the details behind doing that it's preparation it's intentional it's all all of this stuff and you have to have the entire package if you want to go that far and that's a great quote you said you didn't come this far just to come this far that's so true you don't stop halfway because the only reason you started is to get here not here again joe i I really appreciate your time for coming on thank you and i hope um people can get a really good light about um who you are as a person and why don't you tell them where they can find you all right guys uh, number one instagram page at fantasy football counselor and just search me up on youtube there should be a link if you leave a link below i mean that's the main place find me on instagram fantasy football counselor and just uh get be part of the council i guess and join join the nation here and uh, one more tip before i go uh do not look for instant gratification because it does not happen you gotta like gary v says it you gotta eat shit you literally got to eat shit for two to three years. I'm still eating shit, like literally. And again, I'm not afraid to say it. That's the difference with me. I'm real with you guys. You got like it's not like you just start something up. It's like a reward. Like there's lots of money. Like this mic was on a Visa card when I got it. Like it's like everything just you got to build it, man. It's not like everything just comes out like that. Grind and don't look for that instant gratification. Just work. Keep working. Yep, and as long as you're passionate about it, you shouldn't really be worrying about the grind because it'll feel like fulfilling and it'll, and you'll be passionate about it. So I will link all of Joe's accounts down below so you can find him on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. Drop a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, and we'll see y'all on episode seven, which I'm not sure who it's going to be yet, but, but stay tuned, and I'm sure you guys will enjoy. So peace.